In five minutes or less, I'm going to try and present to you a case for why everyone in this room should start a Bitcoin company. But before you do that, why don't we start with what the hell is Bitcoin? Bitcoin was invented seven years ago by an individual named Satoshi Nakamoto, and people actually don't know who this individual's identity is. People think that it's actually a group of very brilliant libertarian cryptographers somewhere. But what Bitcoin essentially did was it removed the need for a financial intermediary to transact value. So I could send you $100 instantly, securely, with zero fees using the Bitcoin protocol and network. Now, despite its amazing potential, a lot of people have come out and said that actually this has no value and no long-term sort of need. Jamie Dimon, the CEO of uh, JP Morgan, famously dismissed it as a fad. And a number of others have claimed its death at least 40 times, as early as January of this year. And the reason they say that is because they think of Bitcoin as a digital currency. When you look at the price of Bitcoin, in late 2013, the price of Bitcoin went, actually increased by tenfold in only a span of a month. It made a ton of people rich. But since then, over the last couple of years, the price of Bitcoin has declined by over 80%, which is why people say, it's a bubble, it's irrelevant, it has no long-term use. But over that same period of time, when you look at usage adoption in terms of the number of transactions on the Bitcoin network, that same story is not, the, not true, actually. The number of transactions has uh, increased by 150% over that same exact time period. So what's going on? Early stage venture in 2012 into Bitcoin and blockchain-related companies was a mere $2 million. I mean, that's probably, you can probably pull it out of your wallet or something right now, but <laughs> um, it's probably true. Let's be honest. Let's be honest. <laughs> but that has increased to $350 million last year, and, and this year, by the end, it's expected to reach a billion. It is one of the fastest and hottest-growing areas of not only fintech, but also technology in general. And the reason for that is because people are starting to realize that it's, it's actually capable of solving real problems, not only for people, but for economies. Let me give you an example. A Filipino houseworker that lives in the Philippines moves to Hong Kong to provide for their family. They remit money, 50 US dollars a week or something like that, and they use companies like Western Union and MoneyGram. And for each of those transactions, they're incurring anywhere from 10 to 40% fees. That is crazy, and that is killing you know, their livelihoods. So what companies have done, startups have done, have come in to use the Bitcoin protocol network to provide the exact same service for up to a tenth of the cost. These two companies are actually started or founded or led by Haas MBAs, and this is uh, something that you know, we should all be as a community very proud about. But this is real value to the customer, real value to people in the world. And so what started out as a P2P network between individuals is now starting to be explored by people across the entire ecosystem. Businesses for supply chain payments, governments for welfare distribution, banks for core infrastructure, and NGOs for you know, releasing foreign aid. And what has happened more recently in the, next, in the past couple months is that big players have started to step in. Jamie Dimon actually a couple weeks ago wrote to his annual shareholders list and said, that maybe he got it wrong. Now, one of the biggest Bitcoin um, supporters is Mark Andreessen, and he um, wrote in 2014 about how we can reinvent the entire thing with Bitcoin. And that thing that he is referring to is the entire financial system. Companies across the board are starting to build out the core infrastructure to design a new financial system that hasn't fundamentally changed in the last 200 more years. And so one of the interesting things that's come out of this, it's actually opened and expanded people's minds. Is it possible to code into Bitcoin, the blockchain, the Bitcoin network, things other than just currency? And that's what companies across the board have started to explore, outside of even financial services, one of which is the Internet of Things. Because when you think about the Internet of Things, it's a machine transacting with another machine, which therefore needs a payment which therefore means a payment protocol that these machines can actually use. And people are starting to explore the use of Bitcoin in the case of the Internet of Things, which hasn't taken off for over a decade. And so what I want to leave you with is this, an analogy, actually. If you were to ask people, 
what is the internet in the early 1990s, people would actually really struggle to tell you what it is. Some people would say, ah, it's a French technology that's gonna go away. Some people might say, it's actually a means for sending, receiving, and storing information. Some people might say that it's a platform for communication, and yet some others, maybe back then, would say that it's a protocol for building applications, new services, new businesses that people can't even imagine yet. And so my question is, what is Bitcoin? Is it the digital coin that people think about in the news? Or is it something much bigger? Is it a protocol on, on which new things can be built? Is it the HTTP of financial services? Thank you very much.